Hello friends, my name is Alex Karekis and I want to welcome you to my Finding Lost Civilization series. Now today is going to be a very exciting day. I'm trekking along the east bank of the Verde River located in Arizona. Now the purpose of my trek here is to actually try to cross over to the west bank. What I'm looking for is a place to ford this river because we're going to go explore some fantastic and ancient cliff dwellings on the west bank. Friends, let me show you a very interesting site here along the Verde River. Beavers used to flourish here at one time. They still live here though, not as plentiful as they once did. But look at this. Here is a tree that has been felled by a beaver. My goodness, let's take a close look at it. I think we'll be able to actually see his teeth marks. Okay, I can see them. Look at this right over here. Right over here, you can see his front teeth. These are the buck teeth cutting into it. Now if this was an axe, it would be clear, it would be smooth, it would be smooth cut. But there it is. These are the teeth marks of a beaver. Well friends, the pattern is very interesting. Look at this, it's like a half moon. So the beaver started eating the tree from the outer limits, so to speak. And then it worked its way into the center and let the tree fall on its own weight. Very interesting. Again, let's take a look. Right over here you can actually see the beaver teeth marks right here. Look at this one right here. Friends, before us you can see the Verde River. It's low. And this area right here that we're standing at was once under water. And over here to my left is the tree that was felled by the beaver. And directly in front or adjacent to this felled tree is this jumble of, of logs and in sticks and, and branches and to me it looks like a beaver home from photographs that I've seen in the past. Now I'm not a specialist and I can't tell you for sure that in front of us we have the beaver home but I tell you what it sure looks like one. Well friends the trek along the east bank of the Verde River was a lot of fun. Who would have ever guessed that we would have encountered a beaver habitat? I took a look at the river and it seems a little swift and I'm unsure of its depth so I decided not to make a crossing from this side to the west bank. But I know an old cattle route on the west side and this is what we're going to do. We're going to trek to this location to the bluffs from the west side and then climb down into the cliff dwellings. So don't go away, let's continue trekking.
Now before we visit these ancient cliff dwellings, I'd like to mention that the style of the cliff dwellings are known as cavet or cavets. Now, the difference between this style of cliff dwelling and others is that many cliff dwellings built over alcoves or overhangs actually have a physical structure built underneath, whereas a cavet style cliff dwelling is actually a structure that is burrowed in to the side of a hill. It's a cave and therefore called a cavet. Now, the structures normally consist of walls covering the cave entrance. I'll tell you what, this should be an interesting journey. I'm excited and I hope you are too. Many of these cave-like shelters that we see here amongst the Sinagua are about three to four feet high. And what they were, were food storage areas. This is where food was stored. But look at the ceiling. You could see a blackness right over here, up over the ceiling, and for example, right over here. Food was also prepared in this location. these are very old shelters and you'll see the earth over here giving way right above here you can see that this shelter this storage area has caved in on itself but look at this you can still see the wall structure which is right over here in front of us let's go take a look at it oh my goodness look at this right before our eyes is our first signs of civilization so to speak look at this a pottery fragment. Now this is fairly typical of the Sinagua stoneware. It was normally plain in this orange color. And right over here you can see where part of the shelter or the wall was to the entrance of this structure. Let's take a closer look. We'll have to be careful because in fact at any moment the roof might collapse in on us. Well, maybe on second thought, I won't go in this shelter. There's so many others to see. Approaching another structure. You can tell that these areas had places for storage. Look at this over here. Right directly in front of us is a storage bin. Of course, there's something else over here in another storage area. But look at the ceiling over here. This black that we are seeing is from soot, from flames. So there was cooking in this area. This is really fantastic. Let's take a closer look. Let's look inside this storage area. Not very large, but frankly, you could store quite a bit of food in there. Now this over here could very well have been the cooking hearth area. And this is the view from outside your house over here. The condos in a Verde Valley. The people lived here because water was a source of life. And right below this condominium, there's a stream that comes from the mountains. So this was a great place to live. This is very interesting here. Let's take a look at the ground. You see this over here? This is cow manure. This is an open range area. I am always amazed at how cattle can reach these inaccessible places or places where it takes me so much effort and so much sweat and toil. But here I find that a good old cow had preceded me. 
Oh my goodness, look at this over here. I just noticed this. Here is another pottery fragment. Again, another sign of life. Yes, someone lived here. Someone had a pot. And this piece right here was part of what they stored or cooked their food in. I'm not sure what type of stone this is, what type of cliff face it is, but look at this. It's very loose, gravelly, and sandy. Very easy to dig into. Yes, it's some type of sandy, loose soil over here. I'll have to do some research to identify what type of composition these cliffs were that the Sanagua built their homes in. My feeling is it's some type of sandstone layer. You can actually see the layering. This was probably at one time an ocean bottom. And this is the sediment that we see before us right here. Of course, I'm not a geologist. I could be completely wrong, but this is my best guess. Friends, I see this fairly large hole in front of us, and look at this. These stones have been upturned. Now the question is, is this natural, or was there someone here trying to excavate, trying to see if he could find any artifacts? My goodness, I have to leave here. It's quite stuffy, and as I look down on the ground, there's a lot of guamo. So, anyways, time to exit for our health. Here's this shelter has also collapsed. But look over here, directly in front of us. This stone here, this volcanic stone, is what's known as a matate. Look at this. This area right here is extremely smooth. So you know that food was ground on this in this manner. Yes, this, this design here is fairly common. If you can imagine the other half of this matate over here. So it would have been a platform that came around like this, approximately twice this size. This is fantastic. This item could have very well been used <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years. And as I look real close into this matate, so to speak, I can see little elements, possibly food. You know, scientifically, this can be etched out, so to speak. This material can be pulled out of there and analyzed, and we could find out what the diet of the Sinagua was at this very specific location. This structure is actually fairly tall. I'm standing up in it, and it's at least six feet tall. So this was definitely a shelter where people could stand up and live. And again before us, there we have the typical food storage area. But look at this, right over here in this area of the structure. Look, there's a passageway into another structure. Maybe this was actually the entrance in this area right over here, right over here, this opening before us was actually walled in. So there's a good possibility there was a wall over here and this is the low entrance right here in front of us. Hard to tell, but definitely it goes into another small cave-like area. Thank you.
Now often with these stones what you have to do is you have to kind of hold it in your hand and in different positions and you know what invariably you'll find the handhold and there it is right here where that broken piece this is how the handhold was right over here where my thumb is it's actually very smooth so I know that an ancient once held this stone and to be smooth here it was held for hundreds of years and right here where my finger is there's another hold so right over here I can tell it fits the hand perfectly and naturally. This was some type of cutting or cooking implement used this way. These structures are very old and very ancient. And of course, the soil here is not very stable. You can see over here all the breakage, wind, weather, rain, and time has taken its toll on these structures. But I tell you what, they're still a wonder to behold. Look at this structure over here. It's at least seven to eight feet tall in the center. Let's go in and take a quick look. Well, you look at this. This feels fabulous standing in here. Let's take a 360 look at what we have. Right over here is a platform. Was this an area where a person slept? And look at that right there behind this platform is another storage area. Now let's take a look out here. Let's see what the view was. All right, here we go. Oh, friends, this ancient who lived here had a wonderful view. Now directly below us, directly below this ledge over here, is the Verde River. It's in that green tree line. And hundreds of years ago, the river flow was 20 feet higher than it is today. This was a very lush area with a lot of vegetation and a lot of opportunities to sustain life. Food was abundant here at one time. It is believed that perhaps, now this is a theory, the Sanagua left this area because the weather patterns changed and this became a high desert plains area. Friends, this here is another matate. This here is extremely smooth as I'm running my hand over it. And look here, there's a little depression. A lot of times these anvil depressions were used to place a nut or a seed and crack it open and then over here ground down. So we're looking at another wonderful piece of ancient history. Now let me turn it over and show you again. You can tell, look at this right over here, how rough it is. This is very rough. So this was the portion that was laying onto the ground. Let me turn it over again, and so there you have it. So this is another ancient matate, so to speak. Right here is the anvil where the item was broken open, and right over here is where it was ground down. Great little find, my friends. You can tell that this ledge has deteriorated quite a bit over the centuries. But look at this right here below us. This was part of the ceiling laying here below us right now. It fell off from over there. So if you can imagine the ceiling kind of starting over here because look at this over here. It's a small opening. But as I looked inside, I saw that it was actually a fairly large structure inside. Let's go in and take a look. Let's see how large this structure is. Friends, we can't stay here long. For some reason, the air is almost gone out of this structure. And I can see that there's a lot of guamo animal droppings. So it's very dangerous to stay in these places when you can't breathe too well. You might very well pick up some airborne disease that is left here by the rodents. So anyways, let's leave while we're still healthy. Well friends, it's raining now. Hopefully it won't last too long. So I found this ledge to take a rest. 
And look what I found as I was looking for a place to sit down. Another matate. When I touched this stone, it was as smooth as silk. At one time it was used to prepare food, but today it will be my seat. <laughs> it had many purposes right up until today. Friends, people often say to me, Alex, how the heck do you find the places that you visit? Well, I do two very important things. The first thing that I do is a lot of research. You can do this at the library, but I think the internet is probably the best place to go. Now, the second thing I do is that when I arrive in the area of the place where I want to visit, I talk to the people that live there. I often ask them if they know about that specific site that I'm trying to visit. No more often than not, I find someone that knows the location and gives me additional information. And sometimes I found places that were just as fun or more fun or greater than the place I wanted to visit. Well, anyways, these are two things that you can do if you want to take the path less traveled to finding lost civilizations. this together you are seeing exactly what I am seeing and I hope you hear the wind blowing through these vast old ruins look at this this is fabulous this is fantastic I feel like I'm in a cathedral look at this very spectacular my goodness boy oh boy I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am Look at this view over here, this large chamber that interconnects with the other ones along this cliff. To me, this looks like a fireplace right over here. And look, you can see the black sith from the fires emanating from the ceiling of that little fireplace right up into the main chamber my goodness look at this now over here is where we came through this leads to the other butte i'm telling you this is a large complex there were hundreds upon hundreds of people living here at one time this was definitely a very large village site but look at this over here look at this interconnecting chamber right here shall we go through it Shall we try to squeeze through the portal of life over here? My goodness, I don't know. My bones are aching and I'm getting a little old to do this. I'll leave that for the youngsters. Let's go out here and see if we can go around to the next chamber. Now I have to be careful. One slip and I'll tumble down hundreds of feet. Look at this, my goodness, what a view. Now, from the camera perspective, it might not look like it's that far away, but it's several hundred feet to tumble off of this cliff onto the ground below us. Now, if you see that green tree line over there, that's the Verde River. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that hundreds of years ago when this area was much more lush than it is today, the river was actually 20 feet higher. So possibly it flowed right here at the base of these cliff dwellings. Well, let's work our way safely 
over to this next chamber. I'm going slow. I don't want to slip and fall or else <laughs> I won't be making any more of these journeys. Oh my goodness, look at this wonderful place over here. My goodness, look at the patina, the character from the smoke. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Well, look at this over here directly in front of us. Look at this. Now I've seen these markings in cliff dwellings of the Anasazi in Utah, right over here. Look at this. Can you see them right over here? These are hash marks. There's a meaning to them. However, they've been lost in time, but they were put there by the ancients. There's no doubt in my mind. I've had a wonderful time in this room. Let's go next door to our neighbors. Let's see what's happening over there. My goodness, look at this. This is very interesting. My goodness, look at the floor. Look at the floor. Oh my goodness, look at the patterns. So they've taken the floor and etched it in squares. This is very beautiful. And look at this, right over here, it's a copule. This could very well have been used for grinding food right here. It's very, very smooth on the inside. But look at this over here. This was probably excavated here by someone looking for a treasure that doesn't exist. Yes, this is really wonderful. Look at the floor. It's beautiful. Let's take a further look at the inside of this place over here. My goodness, I think I'd like to live here. <laughs> it's got a million dollar view, that's for sure. Again, here we have, my goodness, this is fairly deep and extensive. Over here, let's take a look. Again, these are food storage areas, but you can tell the smoke on the ceiling. So when they cooked in here, the soot permeated the whole inside of this place. My goodness, I'm just starting to notice a bunch of symbols left here by modern man. Look at this right here in front of us. I see a V, that's for sure. And I see an R over there. I can't tell what else there is, but definitely I can see a V over here and then an R over here. Let's see if we can find any other symbols here. Did modern man visit this place and leave his name, his initials, and the date and time he was here? I don't know, but maybe we'll find something. Let's take a closer look. Well, there you have it. I see that JB was here. Look at that, we can see that JB was here. When this occurred, it's hard to tell. But listen, look at this right over here. They've defaced the interior of this home. This here is part of the history. The sooth on a wall, the patina, is part of its character. When you do something like that, you actually destroy it. Can you imagine if everybody that came here and put their initials like this, we wouldn't be able to tell that there was any person living and cooking in here because all this wonderful markings from the ancient flames would be gone, lost to someone's initials. Well, before us I see the next interconnecting chamber over here. <laughs> However, it's maybe only three and a half feet high. Shall I climb through there? Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, it goes to two other rooms. Can you see that directly in front of us? This is very interesting. Here is the opening right over here. It comes up and back down like a large V. But right over here where the floor is, look, they carved out a circular pattern so that they could lower the floor level. Well, I'm debating whether I should try it. Ugh, let me see, friends, my old tired bones. Let me put my feet in there first. Let me take a rest. Let me ease on into this room. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. I love the patina. I love the color of the sooth on the walls, which to me shows that life existed in these rooms for hundreds upon hundreds of years. Well, I think I'm gonna take the effort. I'm gonna squeeze through. There we go, it worked. <laughs> look at this wonderful room. So, look at the entranceway, right? Ugh, right over here to my left. Here is another 
perhaps the main entranceway, although it's a cliff face right over here. So perhaps they had a ladder to go down to the ground level. It's about 10 feet below. So let's, let's visit the next room. Let's go through this chamber, through this keyhole of life. Here we go. Oh my goodness, look at this right here, laying here. Look at this stone. Could this be a mono? It has the typical shape. Let me bring it out here to the light. Look at this. Could this have been a cooking implement? Well, yes, it was. Right over here. This is very smooth. So here is another mono. Here is another cooking implement. You can tell over here that it's very rough. And look at it over here. It's very smooth. My goodness. I'll tell you, it's always a wonder to find these things. Okay, so let's go through to the next chamber. Here we go. Uh, oh, beautiful again. Beautiful. And there, look at this before us. It's another chamber. That one looks fairly large. And again, I believe it's a food storage area. Now I can see a lot of small boulders laying in there. There's no doubt in my mind that they probably are what I would consider monos. They are probably cooking implements. Let me get a light. Let's take a closer look and see what lays in there. Here I go. There it is. Can we see anything? Look at all those boulders. I bet you all those boulders, those round ones, were cooking implements. There were manos and matates. There's quite a few of them in there. My goodness, this is interesting. Beautiful. As I walk amongst these ruins, I am amazed at the number of structures that I encounter. This was a fairly large Pueblo. This was a large habitation site. There is no doubt in my mind that there were several hundred people living here. Above us, we have these beautiful cliff dwellings. They're at the upper level, the upper tier. There are actually two, and in some places, three levels as we descend this cliff face and then towards the river. But I want to show you something. Right over here is a point that's a natural runoff from the cliff. And it's at these places that you can often find the remnants of the past. And I say this because as time has gone along, and the cliff dwelling has withered away, washed away, been vandalized. Objects tend to work their way downhill. Let me show you this right over here. There's a stone over here that's not common to this area. Look at this right over here. And the interesting thing about this stone is it's been worked. It's been what's called napped. So right over here, right over here where the stone was struck, points were made out of it. This was used to make arrows, spearheads, and other type of implements. You can see where the stone has been split, so to speak. And look at this right over here. You can find all manner of fragments from the life that lived above us at one time. This whole hillside going down towards the river is probably scattered with the remnants of the ancient life that once existed here. Now I show you these things and I tell you about these things because this is a quest about knowledge and education. This is not a quest about finding artifacts. That is not why I'm here. The joy of discovery is what should propel us. The joy of gathering knowledge. Look at this, my friends. Right before our very eyes is another matate. Look at its configuration. But here's the interesting thing. Right here, you can see the porous edge, so to speak, right over here. But this area right here is as smooth as silk. This is another matate. This is another stone where food was ground onto.
Let's turn it over and take a look at the underside. Well, there's not much to see, except that you can see the rough texture right here, as compared to right over here. Look how smooth this is. This is wonderful. We've seen several of these over here. These are hundreds and hundreds of years old. As I was looking at this matate, I saw an interesting configuration. Look at this over here. Right over here, it's etched, so to speak. There's a circular etching pattern right around the stone right here. And this is the smooth portion. Very interesting. I haven't seen that in the past. You have to look very close. Let me go in there. Do you see that right here? That's the etching pattern around this matate. I had a wonderful time today. I've always enjoyed going into a cave or cave-like structures. They always seem so mysterious, foreboding, and maybe even dangerous. Well, anyways, I invite you to keep trekking with me as we visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten.